everyone, I'm back with another video. So today I have another video class to share my experience and my stay at the mental hospital slash clinic that I went to. And if you're new to my channel, I do suffer from bipolar one mixed episodes with psychotic features and rapid mood swings. So I'm never in one mood for very long. It shifts throughout the day and um, when I'm in a mixed state um, it causes psychosis, hallucinations, delusions um, and it also um, can cause prolonged psychosis so that can um, last from like a few hours to a few days to a few weeks. In my case, it's usually a few days to a week. Um, and I'm usually in that state at least once a week. So, um, but um, I am on Risperdone and Mirtazapine. Risperdone is an antipsychotic and Mirtazapine is an antidepressant. So, um, yeah, so my stay at the clinic, I was having a mixed episode and I was experiencing a prolonged psychotic episode at the time. And I went in on a Tuesday and I was released on a Friday afternoon. Now, when I went in, I was um, hallucinating, I was delusion, no, delusional, and I, I remember feeling so helpless, I remember feeling so scared, so anxious, I was very delusional, like, I went from feeling very scared, very anxious, to being very paranoid. Um, going in there and I remember screaming at the people at the front desk because um, they were asking me a bunch of questions and I felt very overwhelmed um, I had one person checking my vitals the other one asking me questions how am I feeling and so forth I wasn't having any of it um, I was very upset. I started screaming. I told the guy next to me who was doing my vitals not to touch me. Like, don't effing touch me. You know, get me out of here. I just, I want to, I want to leave. Like, I wanted to just leave. And when I'm in that state, I just, I just want to run. I want to leave. I want to go, you know, and I was pretty much trapped. They had unlocked the doors and um i remember just being very just hostile and just very angry and i couldn't understand at the time i couldn't understand why i was so angry and i remember just feeling very anxious very scared very paranoid and um after just yelling and screaming at the people at the front desk the person doing my vitals, the other person asking me questions. They were um, just taking, they took my shoelaces, they took um, my jewelry, they took just anything that would cause me harm. Um, I wasn't allowed any um, junk food. I wasn't allowed any caffeine, chocolate, sodas, teas, just anything of that sort. Um, and uh, they, I, re I remember when they took my shoelaces, I was very upset. You know, I wear kids shoes. I'm a size two in, in kids. I remember um, them asking me for my shoelaces and I told, I told the guy, I said, why are you taking my shoelaces? He said, it's because we want to make sure that you're not going to hurt yourself. So I picked it up. I said, how am I going to hang myself with this? How am I going to hurt myself with this? And he said, 
it's just a safety precaution and you know we have to take your laces so because I made that statement they put me on suicide watch now I was in there involuntarily for 72 hours and they had put me on suicide watch and because I was underweight I was only 65 pounds at the time um, they wanted to monitor my food intake and um, they wanted to make sure that I was taking my prescriptions like I was supposed to and um, they also was monitoring um, just my sleep they were monitoring me when I used the restroom when I took showers um, my food intake they um, made sure that I was eating because when I went in there I was when I'm in that state I don't want to eat I don't have an appetite um, I will starve myself um, and usually just food in general just makes me very like nauseous when it comes to scent taste um, and so forth so being that anxious and that just that paranoid um, just being in there just it was just affecting me like physically emotionally just mentally I was just drained the first night going in was just it was definitely an experience that I'm never going to forget now after they took my shoelaces um, and they put me on suicide watch I remember this these group of guys there was three guys that walked up to me and he said uh, yo, are you uh, bipolar in the house? And I just looked at him and I said, what? Like, I didn't really say anything. Um, but the guy behind me that was, he came in and he was doing his, his thing over here and he told them to, you know, cool it, you know, leave me alone. And they got into a confrontation, so I backed away. They got into a confrontation. They put them in two separate rooms, and I just, you know, I went to walk away, and the uh, nurse at the time um, was saying, you know, you've been here for 10 minutes, and chaos walked into the room, and you caused all these problems within a 10 minute span. And I was very, I was, I was outraged. I was so upset that not only was I already experiencing the mental breakdown, the psychosis, the just the voices, because going in there, I was hearing voices. I was very delusional. Um, I remember uh, telling someone at the time before I went in that I was very, I felt very betrayed. I felt very um, just, I couldn't believe that I was being brought in there for just I was a mess. Um, I remember saying that I was, I felt very betrayed by everyone. And I was admitted by my doctor at the time. And they, um, they brought me in. And after they signed me in and, um, and everything, I,
that evening was the most terrifying experience I think I've ever experienced. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. Um, not only was it my first day there, and I was already nervous by just the amount of people around me. Now, you know, I went in for having a prolonged psychotic episode and a nervous breakdown. And I thought, you know, my problem was, wasn't really that bad. Like I was so delusional. I didn't understand why they brought me in there. I thought nothing was wrong with me. Um, I wanted to leave. I wanted to escape. And that night they had um, one, one guy came in um, by the, um, the cops brought him in um, and he was outraged. Um, I think he was on something and he came in and said that he was going to hurt everyone and they gave him something and he ended up falling and having a seizure. They ended up taking him out um, and then this woman, maybe an hour later, she, came, she comes in and she's hallucinating, she's screaming and they put her in the room to keep everyone safe and you know she was swinging at you know the people at the desk um and they put her in the room and she's banging on the glass saying that she wants to come out she's singing just um just very upset and they kept her in there until she you know calmed down and was relaxed and um, while all this was going on, um, this was between 8 and 10 in the evening, so around 8 o'clock after they did um, showers and, and so forth, um, Everyone went, um, everyone took their prescription, they took their medicines, and um, they gave me mine. And then I went, I sat on my bed, um, and my bed at the time was by the front door, where I thought at the time it was going to be a safe area and which at the time it wasn't. So my bed is over here at the far end. The door is like over here. I'm right over here. So we're, I'm like, I could see everything going on from um, right in front of me. So after seeing these two people come in and you know, I couldn't sleep. I was a nervous wreck. Um, and after taking my, you know, my Risperdone and my uh, Ritazepine, um, I was up all night. I was pacing back and forth. I was walking around the clinic. They had to tell me to go and lay down. I could not sleep. Um, I remember hallucinating and seeing someone um, standing at the edge of my bed. I remember hearing voices and um, I remember hearing my mom's voice, which really made me emotional. And um, after hallucinating, I ended up falling asleep. It had to be like around 4, 4.30 in the morning, I fell asleep and they, um, woke me up around like 6.30, 7 o'clock to do vitals and um, I remember them giving me my Risperdone when I first, um, after doing my vitals and everything and um, 
they tried to get me to eat and I would not eat. I was so nervous, I felt nauseous. Just the scent of food alone just turned my stomach. I didn't want to eat, I was barely drinking anything and being on any type of medicine, prescription, you know, whatever, um, you need to eat and you need to drink a lot of water, which I wasn't. So I, I felt bad. I felt even more sick to my stomach and I just, I refused to eat. And um, when the doctor spoke to me, he asked me how I was feeling. And I told him that, you know, I felt betrayed. I felt scared, I felt anxious. I felt like everyone was out to hurt me. Um, I felt like um, I felt like every everything that could go wrong was going wrong on that day. And I didn't trust anybody. I was I was scared. Um, he did tell me that I was suffering from um, a prolonged psychotic episode, which is initially why I went in. Um, so he was monitoring my mood swings and, and so forth. And he said that my moods were shifting between every 10 to 15 minutes, my moods would shift. Um, and um, at the time I didn't really notice it because to me it's my normal. I don't really pay attention to any of that. It's just all I know is that one moment I'm very happy the next minute I'm crying then I'm angry so to me having those emotions were just very normal but after him you know monitoring you know my mood swings and them being so frequent um, and so close you know between really scared me because at that time I thought well you know what if they don't see any improvement within the next few hours I could be here even longer and I remember him telling me you're gonna go home the next day you know and which was a lie but they were telling everyone you're gonna go home later so forth that was a lie just to keep everybody, you know, calm, which really, you know, irritated me. But um, because I wasn't eating, because I was just so anxious and I refused to eat, they told me that if I didn't eat within the next 24 hours, that they were going to admit me in the hospital and they were going to force feed me through feeding tubes. So... Um, that even that scared me even more. So they gave me a bunch of like snacks, like they gave me some crackers, um, um, some fruit. Um, they gave me plenty of water. They gave me some um, some orange juice and so forth. So um, I was just. I was pretty much just trying to survive. Like, cause I remember, you know, the, uh, when I went in, they, they told me, you know, you need to, you know, stop crying, stop screaming, stop yelling because you're gonna be here longer. And you know, you, you don't wanna do that. You're you're gonna be here for 72 hours, but they can keep you longer based on your behavior. And if they don't see any improvement, you know, they can hold you. And um, because you're involuntarily here, there's really nothing you can do. So I was up for 24 hours um, 
previously the night before so I was very exhausted I only had about maybe four hours of sleep um, that night and that night when I went to bed they ended up giving me another pill um, for sleep so not only did I take my Risperdone, because I got to take that twice a day. It's a, it's um, it's an antipsychotic. So I got to take it in the morning at night, and then I take my mirtazapine for sleep. It's an antidepressant, and they gave me another pill to help me sleep. And I asked them, I said, "What is this?" And they said, "This is to help you sleep, because you were up previously the night before." And I said, "Can you blame me?" There was so much activity going on that night and it just scared me and it caused me to hallucinate and um, when I'm really anxious, I'm really like nervous, I start hallucinating um, and I start to fall into psychosis very easily and um, so I took my medicine. I did not take the other pill that they gave me. I put it under my tongue and I put it in my drawer next to my uh, next to my bed and I waited till everything was clear and I just went and I flushed it down the toilet. <laughs> but you know they were monitoring me you know um, when I used the restroom, when I took showers. I only had I had like a 10 minute shower, they were monitoring me, and I asked them, I said, why are you watching me, but you're not monitoring anyone else? They said, because you're on suicide watch for um, saying that, you know, you were going to hang yourself with your laces. I said, no, 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 that's not what I said. What I said was, how can I hang myself with my shoelaces? They said, that's an automatic, like, suicide, <laughs> you know, watch, you know. Um, so, I'm not suicidal whatsoever. I, you know, I, I have thoughts, but I would never act on it, you know what I mean? I, I'm just, I'm too scared and too anxious to even take it that far. You know but I do have those thoughts um, when I'm in like a deep depressed state and when I'm under psychosis um, I would have those thoughts but um, the next day on the second day um, I just you know I, I pretty much relaxed um, they did therapy um, midday, you know, they talked about how everyone was feeling, um, how everyone's day was going, um, what they want to improve on, you know, within their mental state um, and their communication skills, um, their struggles, everyone talked about their struggles and so forth. So um, they did that for about an hour or two, you know, within like therapy sessions each day, which was okay, but I didn't feel open enough to really talk about how I was feeling in depth because I understand that I have a severe you know, mental illness and to talk about my hallucinations, my delusions, um, and my intrusive thoughts from my OCD, it's very personal for me and it's very embarrassing because when I'm in that state, I'm very incoherent, you can't communicate with me, I'm very confrontational, I want to fight, um, I... And I can be in that state for days, sometimes weeks, um, if I'm not medicated. Um, 
and um, usually in the evenings I will become very psychotic um, very delusional and um, I will experience a lot of grandiose um, and um, so hearing voices are very prominent in that state of mind and there's really only one person that I trust that I can communicate with who um, without a doubt you know has never judged me um, at all and who's have who's accepted me for who I am and um, I trust so very much so um, but to open up to anyone else about just um, those uh, struggles and those weaknesses um, it's very hard for me and yeah just thinking about it is, is making me a little emotional because um, it's hard to trust um, many people especially when you have um, struggles like I do um, and I'm happy that, you know, um, I can trust this person with my, um, my weaknesses, my struggles, my mental health, just everything and, um, I'm just so thankful that this person is in my life because um, I really don't have anyone that I can go to and as like a safe space, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have a person that I can just um, call and say, hey, you know, I'm feeling very emotional today. I'm hearing voices. Um, I'm feeling like I'm being watched or followed or just talk about my mental state and feel like I can trust, you know what I mean? So to have this person in my life and to share these experiences and my mental state with, um, I truly appreciate it and um, yeah, I just, I love this person so much, so um, I know they trust me and I trust them just as much, so um, I'm glad that I have them in my life, um, but I share certain parts of myself here on my channel because I feel like not everyone is perfect and you know, when I do have my episodes, my uh, episodes where I'm just freaking out and screaming, yelling, so forth, um, it's out of frustration. Um, and usually at the time when that's going on, I'm hearing voices, I'm having intrusive thoughts. Now, with my intrusive thoughts, um, I see visions of it's like a movie being played in my head and I'm hearing voices and I'm seeing violent images going on and those violent images are um, towards other people um, in which like let's say um, let's say I'm, I'm anxious about being in the car and let's say you know someone says hey you know I'm going to the store 
that image of my fear being in the car and so forth would pop in my head and I have an image of this person being in a car accident and um, passing away or just being severely hurt and my fear would now I would see in them in that image now when I hear voices those voices attack me those voices threaten me so um, when I'm hearing voices they would tell me you know the food's poison don't eat it uh, you're being watched you're being followed um, uh, this person is going to hurt you this person is going to um, cause you harm um, I feel like um, people are listening um, uh, when it comes to uh, social media uh, websites um, I close it all out close it all out because I feel like I'm being um, watched and I feel like I'm being listened to through my um, screen on my phone uh, my TV um, my game system just any type of electronic I feel like I'm being listened to and followed um, and um, recorded and watched through any type of like electronic device so um, I remember having an episode last week actually um, and I felt like I was being watched and recorded through my screen and I covered my, tele my, my TV, my game system, my mirrors. I felt like um, within the mirrors, I can see a reflection of faces. Now, these faces are very uh, evil, um, and I'm very sensitive when it comes to um, pictures. When it comes to pictures, it's very uh, it's very sensitive for me. Um, faces um, change; um, they become very uh, evil, um, and they tend to lunge towards me. Um, and um, the television talks to me, so um, just to name a few. So um, I feel like all food is poison, tainted, so that's why I don't eat as much, and that's why I'm underweight um, because of. Um, the psychosis um, so yeah um, after that episode of me um, covering the mirrors and seeing the faces and hearing the voices um, and um, uh, that lasted for about two days and then um, after like four days is when I finally took um, the blankets. I took blankets, I clipped the top of my mirrors um, to cover it and um, after like four days I just I removed it and like it didn't bother me anymore but um, yeah um, but after that that um, 72 hour stay, um, they did release me that afternoon. And um, I,
don't think I ever want to go back. Um, I remember I was cleaning a lot. Um, uh, they let me have hand sanitizer, uh, my body mist, my lotion. That's pretty much it. Um, they gave me extra food, um, extra water. Um, they gave me um, extra snacks <laughs> when I was in there just to keep my weight up. And my weight was like fluctuating throughout the day. So um, as soon as I would gain half a pound, I would lose it within a few hours. So it was, you know, my weight fluctuates. Um, and I think it's because I'm just so anxious and stressed. Um, so stress and anxiety um, causes a lot of weight fluctuation. So. Um, yeah, and it really um, prevents me from having an appetite and eating and so forth. But yeah, I wanted to, you know, share my experience. It's been requested. Um, I think I've done this video once before, but this was um, the other part of um, my stay that. I thought I would mention. Um, I did meet a lot of nice people, um, but I felt like what I was going through was much minor and less severe than most of the people that were there. So I was more of like, a listening ear to a lot of the people there um, and um, and the, the people that you know first came in and it was their first time you know I, I would sit talk to them um, just tell them my experience why I was there make them a little bit comfortable so they wasn't so nervous and um, I just tried to make everyone feel like feel safe and comfortable um, because I know when I went in there I really didn't have that experience nobody really came up to me and said hey you know um, everything's gonna be okay you know um, you know I you know people People were kind of mean, um, very uh, distant. So I had to learn quick um, my surroundings and how everything worked in there um, and just try to adapt as much as I can. Um, the first day I just, I isolated myself. I stayed to myself. I really didn't talk to anybody until the next day when I felt comfortable in therapy and um, I got to know a few others um, that were um, shared similar experiences that I was in there for um, but I felt like my issue um, even though it was severe um, I felt like it really wasn't that bad but then again, um, that's why, um, you know, I was in there because I, at the time, I, I didn't think anything was wrong. I felt betrayed. I felt like, why am I being put here? Um, and in this situation, I felt like everybody was out to hurt me. I felt like... You know, I couldn't trust anybody at the time because it just, it was hard to open up and I felt like when I opened up, I felt betrayed and I was locked up for 72 hours and I didn't realize until after I came home that 
I really needed to be there. I really needed to be put back on my medicine. I would think I was off my medicine for about a week at that point. Um, I refused to take it. Um, and um, I, I really needed to be on it because um, I can't function. I can't function mentally, emotionally. Um, I'm in and out of psychosis. Um, I'm very um, confrontational. I want to argue. Um, you can't reason with me. You can't communicate with me when I'm in that state of mind because um, I will um, feel very um, paranoid. I'll, I'll, I'll feel like you're turning against me or something that you say um, I will miss and misinterpret into something uh, negative or something um, that might hurt me. Um, so my, my, uh, my thought process is very, um, uh, my, my delusional state is very, uh, uh, it's not all there, so to speak. It's, it's not, I'm very out of it in that state of mind. So, um, yeah, so that's just my experience and what I went through and um, I don't want to go back so um, I, I stay on my medication I take it like I'm supposed to sometimes I'm late in the evening um, and I become a little um, psychotic and a little um, uh, irritable or whatnot, but um, yeah, but that's my experience and my stay at the mental hospital. And I hope you guys enjoy this video and this video cast. And I hope. Um, it helps somebody, you know, who's suffering like I am. And um, yeah, it, you can always, um, there's always um, a listening ear. Even, even when you feel like you're alone, there's always, um, there's always hope, you know what I mean? So don't give up. You know when you're at your lowest um, don't ever give up because there's always hope and there's always a better day um, ahead so I try to keep that in mind too when I'm in that state in that mind frame in that state I always seem to think more into the future instead of right now because right now is not where I want to be I want to be towards the future. I want to look towards the future because it seems so much brighter than my darkest hour, my darkest state of mind. So um, that gives me hope and keeps me more positive into um, just trying to keep myself in a more positive and a more um, clear mental state and I try to stay focused I try to you know uh, focus on you know doing my you know cleaning videos um, that keeps me you know cleaning helps with my mental state um, I know that was mentioned in the comments um, before and it does it's very therapeutic um, I love cleaning um, I call it cleaning up cleaning up chaos if I could speak. So when I'm having um, hallucinations or 
I'm very delusional or I'm having intrusive thoughts, cleaning cleans up my mental state. And even though it's temporary and it relaxes me for that moment, um, it makes me feel better emotionally, mentally, physically as well. And um, yeah, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, thank you so much for your video, Crest. And I'll see you guys in the next one.